Greetings everyone, your local Shenanigan Gamer back with another video, but this time something a little bit different. Uh, this is post audio. Uh, what you're seeing here is a screen recording of me messing around on an iPad with Procreate. It's a drawing app and uh, I decided, as I have been doing for a while, to draw a nebula of sorts, hopefully. <laughs> So at the moment, I am creating my star field. So it's pretty difficult to uh, actually be random, <laughs> it turns out. And uh, as you see, I'm just dotting around here. And it may look like absolute madness at the moment, but it will make sense as we build it layer by layer by layer. And as we watch this being built, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, jump over, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well, so you can stay in the know with all my starscapes <laughs> and other shenanigans as well. So, my effort here is to appear random and then basically duplicate the layers up and up and up. So I'm populating, I'm adding depth, I'm adding size, and hopefully it makes absolute sense <laughs> so i like to draw um i like to doodle and um, i'm new enough to digital art in this way um i recently picked up just a normal pen you know touch screen pen don't have an ipad pro don't have an apple pencil or anything like that don't have a cintiq just just an ipad air first gen a couple of years old and uh just some I think the first pen I got was about five euro. Um, I picked up an Adobe ink pen for 20 euros there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a little bit more akin to a pencil. Um, as, you as you saw actually when I was creating the stars, I was creating some lines as well, which I didn't quite like at all. But um, as you can see here, duplicating the layers, resizing, flipping them, rotating them, and then just adding layer upon layer upon layer as well. This is one way. I, I, there's many other ways to create star fields as well. Now I kind of lost my way a little bit here. So I was kind of going, where, where are my stars? Where are my stars? So kind of going back, deleting again. And I think this time is when it all started kind of making sense. Um, I created some layers without even moving them to add a bit of brightness as well because I felt at the time the stars weren't popping enough and um, I was trying to kind of create some formations as well rather than just sporadic dots um, I, I wanted to make my own like constellation of Orion or you know some some sort of constellation that would stand out and hopefully I achieved that. Now, just as a caveat, this is like the third or fourth time that I've done this technique, so it's not perfect, and I don't want to come across as this being a tutorial. This is just me messing around, and you happen to come along for the ride as, and see my mistakes, just like there. <laughs> but one of the advantages of digital art is the undo button. Um, in traditional art, I like to draw pencil and ink. Um, I don't color that often. I don't paint. Uh, I'm not skilled in that fashion at all. But I tend to draw a lot of buildings and um, craft, be it you know terrestrial or extraterrestrial. You know Star Trek and stuff like that as well. Because I'm a science fiction geek as well that's why i was paying more attention to the starfield initially i know we're several minutes in here and you're like god he's still working on the starfield but we're getting there we're getting there we're setting the scene we're setting this is like the first act and then the second act will be putting in some dust and depth within the uh center part of the screen as well but um as you can see now i'm kind of putting in some bigger stars and I'm going to do the same thing again, but not as intensely as the first one. 
I kind of feel like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> and that name has been mentioned several times on this channel as well because of uh, the way I apparently talk. But that's for another story. So, duplicated the first layer of the bigger stars, flipped it over, scaling it out, and merging down and duplicating that again. Just to give a little bit of depth and I decided to kind of flip these on the vertical and then again just do that on the far side eventually I'll just have like one large star field layer as well and pinch these guys down as well I love the whole pinch it's very similar to Photoshop if anyone's familiar with Photoshop or any kind of layer apps like this uh, Procreate's not free. Um, I think it was about 10 euro. There, thereabouts. But if you have an interest and you have an iPad, it could be something. You know, you can do this with your fingers as well. It doesn't have to be anything special. So this is where I kind of want to add a little bit of color, a bit of soft color. So I'm bringing down the opacity of my brush. I'm going with a large airbrush side of things, just to kind of give a little bit of hue to the scene before we start on our nebula, which I believe I'm about to do it now. So again, I'm just creating a new layer, so in case I need to edit and adjust. So I'm kind of going after a whole kind of Barnard's loop-ish kind of nebula, um, or my take on one. So as you can see, I'm just kind of jumping between some brushes. There's a lovely one in here. It's actually called Nebula. Um, and I'm just going to vary the brush size just to kind of create a bit of depth here and just kind of add some kind of layering. I'm kind of going to tweak around this as you can see. I thought that was a little bit too bright. So I'm going to bring down the opacity and increase the star, the brush size. And uh, you know it's all about tweaking. And don't be afraid to experiment and explore. And this time now I'm going to pull up the clouds brush. Now as you can see there's presets and properties in here as well. But I'm just leaving them on default. And this is just me getting used to the app as well. So I'm going to create that layer or go with that new layer. And then just starting to add some detail. I went a little bit darker on here. So, this is where I'm kind of, my mind is going into trying to create waves uh, emanating out from the center. So I'm thickening up rings within it. And you may be going, what the hell are you doing? But I'm going to do a color dodge here, and you'll see what this will do now. And if we set our brush to white, and then we can pick any brush we want. I I think I kept it to the clouds one. This is actually going to bring in some brightness into it. So as you can see, I'm kind of pulling out some brightness in portions. Creating a little bit of focal interest in the center of it there. Now I do tweak that towards the end. But this is just adding a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth to the cloud layer, just to kind of make them pop in areas to kind of draw the eye. Or oh, that's my intent anyway. So I'm varying the brush size here. And I went with a relatively thin one, just to kind of create a bit of a perimeter. And sometimes the key to this kind of creativity is just to try new things. It may not work, you know, but just see what sticks. Use a reference. Now, the way I was doing this, I was just messing around in the search room, so I didn't actually use any references. This is just straight from the depths of my mind. 
but it's almost like the eye of Sauron a little bit. So I've gone back to my original layer and I'm using the eraser just to remove some of the bulk of that central mass to kind of show a bit of negative space on the inside of it. Because I was liking the kind of ring explosion type. So if you're going to go for an explosion, you're going to evacuate everything from the center outwards. So why have such a mass in the center? But um, in retrospect, I probably wish I took out a little bit more. But, you know, I was rel relatively happy with the kind of outcome of it. Now, from here, I think, yes, there's a flare brush in here. And I wanted to add a few little pops off the flares just to kind of show some like real twinkly G type stars. Maybe not even G types. Maybe there's some neutrons in there as well. But I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of I don't know, eye candy. But again you can tweak them, remove them. Again in hindsight I probably wouldn't have put that many in as well. But I think it's cool the way it's turning out, kind of starting with a blank page, ending up with something like this. Um, not perfect, and it doesn't have to be, as long as you're enjoying it and having fun. But uh, this is this is me beginning my journey on learning tools, learning new techniques, because again, as I said, I like to draw, but I never really like to colour, and digital arts, you can really go down multiple paths you can get into like really technical sides of things which is cool uh, but for me what's compelling to me is the layers and actually the painting and I'm sure I can bring a lot of this into the practical traditional art as well but again a canvas is a canvas and I just like the flexibility and the potential of digital art but using it in a traditional way pen on the screen you know, it's pretty cool what you can do. And I know there's tablets out there like the Surface and the Cintiq and the iPad Pro. But if you have a tablet that's capable of running stuff like this, you know, it's, it's a minimal investment. You don't need to let technology and price get in your way a lot of the time. So I'm just bringing down the opacity a bit on this because I thought it was a little bit too bright. But I'm kind of happy with the layering off it as well. So not so much a loop, but kind of a, like a sphere, <laughs> a circle-esque nebula with some negative space in there. Now I think I wrap up with just putting a little bit of a purple hue Go back to my good old favorite airbrush and soft brush. And again, go low on the opacity and you can kind of layer it up. And just kind of build and build and build. And sometimes the hardest part is to walk away. But that's pretty much it. I think I'm wrapping up almost here. I think I put my little signature in at the end. But, um, you know, as we wrap up, if you kind of want to see me doing more doodles and stuff like that, uh, maybe you have particular images that you want me to kind of tackle and stuff, let me know in the comments below. And, uh, you know, just want to add a little bit of variety to the channel as well, but kind of keep it on point. It's always good. But anyway, I've been your local Gamer. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and your support is greatly appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy, and goodbye.